Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember? So you don't have to. When you usually hear stop motion, you might think of Nightmare Before Christmas or Leica Studios. While these examples are no doubt classics, they use a similar style, using plastic-like textures and replacing the heads with different expressions decided by a computer. While this looks fantastic and should be admired, there's another form of stop motion that's not being used as much in film anymore, and that's clay animation. The kind where every expression, every lip movement, literally everything is moved with just one puppet, no switching out of the heads. Or far less frequent switching out of the heads. We saw this a lot with Will Vinton's Claymation, and we saw it a whole lot with Armin Studios, the folks who created Wallace and Gromit. For years, these characters, and many others from Armin Studios, delighted audiences with this style of animation. Now, make no mistake, there's no right or wrong way to do stop motion. I mean, these other films are insanely impressive by any definition. But this style kind of feels like animating without a safety net. These expressions are being molded in the moment you're animating everything else, as opposed to picking an already sculpted head. It just feels like there's a touch more of a raw risk in the craft. Why does any of this matter? It doesn't. This film CG. Released in 2006, Flushed Away is one of only two computer animated films Armin Studios ever made. Now, while Arthur Christmas just happened to be one of the greatest holiday movies of the past 10 years, Flushed Away is often referred to as, oh yeah, that stop motion movie that's not stop motion. And this was because water, which the story's environment is constantly set around, would damage the clay puppets and the cost of using other effects to replicate the water would be so high it just made sense to go CG. Not that this mattered, because the film was a pretty big box office disappointment, splitting ties between DreamWorks and Arvin. Even the reception online seems to be, it's alright, I guess. And, I don't know, I think it's a little better than alright. Okay, I'm not gonna say this is like one of the great comedies, but for an idea I certainly can say I had no interest in. I mean, Rats in the Sewer doesn't sound that gripping. <laughs> now Rats in the Kitchen, that's a masterwork. I also thought it was pretty inventive, energetic, and yeah, pretty funny. The film has found a comfortable life on home video in recent years, and I'm here to ask, does it deserve even better than that? Does it deserve more than, yeah, I'll just put it on, entertain my kids, along with Minions 25? Well, we're gonna take a closer look. Let's see why going down the shitter might not be as bad as you thought. Even in England, I see what y'all eat. Let's take a look at Flushed Away. The film does open in England with a family leaving for vacation, leaving their pet Roddy, voiced by Hugh Jackman, in a room of DreamWorks and Armin references. Yeah, get used to those. What are you all standing around for? We've got a big day plan. Let's go, people! Wait, wh where's Ravi's butlers? You know, the little hamsters in tiny suits that did everything for him. No, not the video game, you stupid words are somehow alive. I mean in the movie! At least, I thought I meant in the movie. Oh my god, did I confuse these guys in the game for being in the movie all along? But I never even played the game. Yeah, I... Yes, you're right. Well, wait, what about the trailers? 73% of household accidents happen in one particular room. No. Wash away. I kept my legs straight, Spike. No. Bomb voyage! Help! Flushed away. Wow, okay. Every single trailer and commercial doesn't seem to have them. Even in the Japanese trailer, they don't show up. Wait, whose hands are those? Wait, who's that? Who is that? No, no, I'm not crazy. I, I just have to keep searching. Let me keep looking through YouTube here. There they are! There they are! They're the butlers! Yes! Woo! Yeah, it took me a while to find it, but there is just one teaser trailer on YouTube where you can see Roddy had two butlers. They made it pretty far into production, but at the last minute, they pulled him out. That is so gratifying to know. And yeah, the film is better without him. Okay, as much as I said stop motion with clay was a lot riskier, this is an example of why CG sometimes can be beneficial. These characters, I'm sure would have been fine, but seeing Roddy interact with literally nobody is a lot funnier, and emphasizes the point of the story a lot better. And you can't really erase them from the movie with stop motion. Not without it costing a fortune given the Arwen and Helm's deep treatment. And yeah, this opening of Roddy acting like a hotshot with literally no friends at all is both kind of sad but really hilarious at the same time. 
Mm. Oh, I get it, because he was the ball chin guy in movie 43. See you tomorrow! Oh good, they cut out the butlers and the scene where he sleeps with that doll in the same bed. <gasps> Roddy hears a noise in the middle of the night and up from the sink erupts Sid. Voice by Shane Ritchie. Have you got a TV? Well, yes. Say no more! <laughs> so yeah, I haven't talked much about the animation yet and... It's a little tricky. With Arthur Christmas, they leaned hard into a different style that really matches the 3D world and movement. Where this is clearly trying to replicate the style of Nick Park. And honestly, it probably should have waited another five years or so. Like when Lego Movie came out, it looked so good, everyone swore it was stop motion. And that's not the case here. The choppy animation looks great with clay because you know every frame was on a real set with real clay being sculpted. Here, we know it's all just from a computer, so not using motion blurs for a lot of the movement comes across as kinda lazy looking CGI even when we know it's a stylistic choice. If anything, it just makes you wonder what this all would have looked like in stop motion. And I don't think that's the goal. But when you realize it came out the same year as Arthur and the Invisibles, it looks a little better. It also doesn't help that Sid is not the funniest character. Do you like seafood? C can I call you a cab? <laughs> seafood! Yeah! I know he's supposed to be off-putting, but there's a humorous way to do that in this. Oh, careful, mate! Those aren't chocolate buttons! There's literal shit on the ground. <laughs> Don't make me talk for five hours again about how to do this right. Roddy tries to get rid of the unappealing Sid by telling him the toilet is a jacuzzi. Be seeing you, my friend. <laughs> You think I don't know the toilet when I see one? Well, going by literally one minute ago, no. Sid flushes him down the drain. Have you seen my dad? Yeah, anime films back then weirdly liked acknowledging they knew what Finding Nemo was for some reason. Hey, what do you know? I found Nemo. And he lands in the sewers. He discovers the city of Retropolis. And this is where the film starts to get fun. The design of this place is really inventive and has a lot of personality. I love checking out what doubles as buildings or everyday items down here. And so help me, I love it when Brits make fun of Americans. Make him move, honey. Boy, you got a face like a frying pan. Come on, honey. I don't think he speaks English. Okay, so we legally allowed Dick Van Dyke to get away with this. It's time to move on. You're trying to get up top, me hearty. Here's an example of a joke I love. The sea captain tells him to get back to the surface. He needs a boat called the Jammy Dodger. The name of the boat's the Jammy Dodger. Um, uh, thanks for- You're welcome. I love it because not only do you have to ask why does he have that, but then you also notice that his peg leg is a pencil. Maybe I just know if I went crazy, I'd probably go the same crazy as this guy. He stumbles across the captain named Rita, voiced by Kate Winslet, who's on the run from gangsters she stole a ruby from. They're captured by Spike, voiced by Andy Serkis, and Whitey, voiced by Bill Nighy. The Persuader. Ain't that right, Persuader? Yeah! The Persuader's alive, Spike! Whitey's my favorite character. I know where it is! Spit it out! Look at the bottom. I mean, is it me, or is it oddly shaped? I mean, it's no gadget, but I don't think it's that oddly shaped. The booty's in the booty. Okay, I have to come to grips with something. They find the ruby and take them to their crime boss, simply called the Toad. Voiced by Ian McKellen. Is your new boyfriend a waiter? Boyfriend? Waiter? And because I know you're just waiting for me to make a Wolverine and Magneto joke, that remarkable metal doesn't run through your entire body, does it? No, I'm CG. Oh, right. I just want to get home to Kensington. Up top? Yes. Huzzah! A man of quality! He's obsessed with what he thinks is high art of the royal family from up top, but it turns out it's all just souvenir kitsch. Smooth to the touch. Easy, Tiger. <laughs> You make me giggle like Patrick was here! So, okay, watching it again, I will admit there are a fair amount of jokes that are a little lame. He's a madman! Run away! <laughs> Pardon me. My fly's undone. But a lot of the humor does come from these eccentric characters reacting to other eccentric characters. Like when the Toad literally wants to put him on ice next to a rat Han Solo. Former enemies, thieves, double-crossers, and do-gooders. I just love this world has rat Christianity. Like, no, there's no joke I can tell that won't piss everybody off, forget it. But was it those little red sticks from those handy snacks? Rita has a way to get out of their predicament. There's a paperclip in my back pocket. See if you can get it. In the pocket, in the pocket. 
Okay, this movie is literally giving a rat's ass to give us that rat's ass. And they escape with the ruby that she says originally belonged to her father. Ah! Oh, God! There are things I want to do, sights I want to see. That wasn't on the list. Ah! Okay, I feel better about my gadget joke earlier because somebody was clearly working through something with this. I know crotch jokes are pretty easy laughs, but not only is this one with the hammer one of the most painful I've ever seen. <laughs> my balls literally just cried watching that. But then you have this topper. <laughs> Come on, there's some good funny in this. Rita gets to her ship and Roddy climbs aboard and discovers the ruby isn't real. It's a fake. No, it's blooming not. Watch this. <laughs> the ruby may be fake, but that reaction to such cruelty? Priceless. Roddy says there's a jewelry box back home, and if she gets in there, he can give her some of the jewelry. This causes her to make a stop at her home, and you wouldn't think seeing her family would be that funny, but not only is the stability of this house hilarious, the designs of all these psycho kids are riot, but they also cram a ton of jokes in a very short amount of time. I had to watch this scene three times before I feel like I caught all of them. It's an impressive couple of seconds. Who might you be, little chap? They call me Shocky. And why do they call you that? Reminds me of my childhood. They get back in the water and are chased down by Toad's henchmen. Again, the everyday appliances these things use for weapons and vehicles are really imaginative. Plus the slapstick, still pretty solid. There's like 20 crotch shots in this and I'm surprised like 18 of them are working. They escape again, so Toad sends in his cousin named LeFrog, voiced by Sean Renault. Forgive me my warty English cousin, but this bizarre obsession with the rats, it is not good for you. Who can look at this imagery and say, yeah, it's just doing what every anime film does. This film ain't perfect, but when it gets really crazy and weird, it kind of is. Toad goes into his backstory about how he was a pet for Prince Charles. Until he was replaced with a pet rat, hence the hatred he has for the entire species. I was cruelly plunged into a whirlpool of despair. And since then, I've put a curse on the royal family. I wonder how that's doing. Another good reason to cut the butlers out. It leads to both a really funny, but also really sad joke where Roddy keeps saying goodnight to Rita because he just likes hearing somebody actually say goodnight back to him. Goodnight. Goodnight, Roddy. Goodnight. Goodnight, Ned. Goodnight. Goodnight, Spot. Goodnight. Goodnight, Jimbo. Goodnight. Bonjour. 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 They're attacked by the French frogs, though, and okay, mimes have been done to death in anime films by this point, but tell me this doesn't breathe some new life into it. This dance of deception must end. Return what you have stolen from me. Enough dancing! I like even the toad gets confused how the mechanics work. The king. Turn. That's plain damn weird. He reveals he's actually looking for a cable that Rita stole and is using as a belt, which is part of a diabolical plan he has for a death machine. And yeah, I bet you never heard this joke when it comes to the French. Okay, men. To action! We, we surrender. surrender! What are we missing? Snails and we'll get French bingo? They knock them off a cliff, but Roddy uses a bag as a parachute to get themselves out of danger. <laughs> Look, I can see Simon Cowell jokes literally not aging well. You need Botox. <laughs> you need a facelift. They make it to Rowdy's house where he holds up his end of the deal and totally steals from his owners. I'd love to meet your family. <sighs> he lied about having a family before, so he pretends Sid is his brother named Rupert. Oh, hello. Rita, this is uh, Rupert. What? And as not particularly funny as I found this character, this bit did make me laugh. We're very close, aren't we, Rupert? Um, on with the tour, shall we? Hello, Sid. Hello, Rita. Oh, thank God, I thought at least half the third act was going to be dedicated to this. Rita discovers he's all alone on the surface and, of course, is too proud to admit that he needs her. Again, a pretty tired trope, but it doesn't last long as Roddy puts together Toad's evil plan is to flood the town of rats at halftime. That's the Toad's plan. That's why he needs the cable. When everyone goes to the toilet, the whole city will be flushed away. That's why he was working on exploitive merchandise. The henchmen capture Rita off screen, a little odd. It's like jumping from here to here in Home Alone. Thus Toad gets the cable and Rita is hung over the soon to be flooded town. So Ronnie decides to make Sid the official pet of the house if he sends him back below. 
He saves Rita, but Toad and his men spot them. Stop them! <laughs> I'm sorry, when these moments work, they really work. They fight on top of the town as the sound of millions of digested mushy peas are flushed towards their home. <laughs> they get Toad's liquid nitrogen to freeze up the wave. See if they can figure it out in that Jackman McKellen movie. Why couldn't they in this one? And the day is saved. I was wondering if you do build a Jammy Dodger Mark II, you wouldn't happen to need a first mate, would you? Oh, you wouldn't be my first mate. Oh, you mean on the ship? I, oh yeah, sure, sure. We get some more slug mugging, which yeah, maybe there's a little too much of that in this. They get another ship and set afloat, leaving Sid in his new home. Roddy, they've brought you a new friend. Wow! And that was flushed away and I don't know, I guess I have a real soft spot for it. <laughs> Watching it again, I certainly do notice the weaker jokes more, and yeah, sometimes some side characters like the slugs can be a little minion-esque. But when it goes weird, imaginative, and unapologetically silly, I think it's a ton of fun. There's just way too much goofy imagery and surreal zaniness to overlook. When boring or unfunny moments hit, they don't last long, and honestly, some of those moments are saved by just looking at the reactions of the characters, who are animated and performed very charmingly. I guess if somebody sees this film as just passable, I can see that, as it's not all laugh out loud funny. But the many moments that are make this trip down the crapper a surprisingly fun one. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember, so you don't have.